Stingrays have shaped our marine coastal environments for millions of years, and because of this physical manipulation of the uh, of their environments, we're trying to promote them as tools for conservation, not just to protect themselves as a group of species, but also to highlight the ecological importance of the habitats within which they exist. We've been able to go out and repeatedly sample the same sites and we've been able to recatch a lot of these same individuals. So from a science point of view, I suppose one of the greatest uh, achievements of this program has the sort of rediscovery of the Atlantic Chupar or the Caribbean Whiptail Stingray um, that hasn't been described formally in the Bahamas before. And we have a paper that's just about to be published in the Caribbean Naturalist Journal that describes and updates this animal's contemporary distribution. One of the more notable elements of this research program in the last two, two and a bit years has been the collaborations that we've been able to set up and these, these new relationships that we've fostered with university groups and, and other research institutes. And one of the resounding successes has been the supervision of around half a dozen graduate students from various universities across Europe and the UK and we've been looking at a whole range of different aspects of these animals ecology ranging from thermal niche preference and, and temperature tolerances in the wild to the very first comprehensive assessment of uh, their feeding behaviour between these two coexisting species of ray. I think really one of the driving reasons for success within this research initiative is not only the traditional science grants that we've been able to secure, but also the organisation exposes over a thousand students and educators from all over the Bahamas and all over the states and other parts of the world every year. I think for me personally, one of the most rewarding things about this is the fact that every time one question's answered, we have several more that need answering. You know, we, we expose our research to many people that have never really considered stingrays before. And a question we always ask at the beginning of the day is, you know, put your hand up if you're a little bit nervous about what's going to occur today, running around chasing large wild stingrays. And we might have a few hands that go up in the morning, but there's never hands that go up in the afternoon. And I think that the way we can use stingrays to promote conservation value of sensitive and vulnerable marine habitats uh, seems to be very successful.